necessary. But what the Germans did was they put together scratch units for Kampfgruppe. And here you can see a Kampfgruppe moving into position. It's made up of a variety of troops. Panzer Grenadiers, reconnaissance troops, Hitler Youth, Neonakak units and Luftwaffe police press together and give them one order. Hold up the Allies as long as you can. Make them pay. Give us time to fortify Festung Deutschland. Here we can see them moving down into position. They want to ambush the Bosch Allies. A mixture of the reports, as you can see. Not a mixture you would perhaps have expected to see at the beginning of the war, but this is a very, very ad hoc, very scratch unit. We've got command car, we've got an SDKFZ 222 light armoured vehicle, light reconnaissance vehicle, armoured is 20 millimetre. A Russian 76 millimetre. Captured by the Finns in the Winter War of 1939-1940, traded to the Germans for more up-to-date weaponry. It's still a pretty impressive bit of kit. This particular gun had been emplaced on the Normandy beaches. It had fired on the Allies as they landed on D-Day. Had been rescued, as it were, by the Germans. Brought back as part of this rolling defence. So what we've got now is basically an ambush. We have infantry here, there's an old bunker which they've occupied, they intend to hold that position and the vehicles and the gun that we've got are going to give them all the support that is available. The fact that we have a command car doesn't necessarily mean that there is a, a, a senior officer here, it's basically any transport that was available they've got hold of, they're using it to move troops. Just a word about the camouflage we can see here. Um, Tricolour camouflage was introduced to the German army in 1943, but nobody suggested that there was a, a singular way to do it. There were different types, different units used different types. We can see here, for instance, that the Citroën has got a striped camouflage, which became known as Normandy camouflage. The command car and the two armoured vehicles have got a more mottled camouflage, which perhaps, ironically or ominously, was known as ambush camouflage. That's precisely what this camp grouper is going to do now. now. They're going to deploy this field piece and hope to catch any sort of probing allied units unawares. It's an edgy, nervous time. The Allies know that the Germans are going to contest every yard, every metre that they're advancing. They also know that the war is coming to an end. Sometime soon, the war must end. Nobody wants to get killed in the war. Nobody wants to get killed in the last month or two of the war. So there's this real sort of, almost a, a frustration you come across when you read the memoirs of soldiers. This frustration, why don't the Germans just give up? Why don't they recognise the inevitable? Why do we have to keep the killing going on? Well, the answer is, of course, that Hitler was determined to try and manipulate the situation to protect Germany from the menace of the Soviet advance. They've got their field piece in position now. The soft skin vehicles, themselves scarce at least for the moment, and we're awaiting what the Allies are doing. They're probing forward very carefully. They'll be using reconnaissance vehicles, small, light, fast vehicles, to probe ahead of their advance. <laughs> Every hedgerow, every church steeple, every isolated farm could be the basis of a German ambush or a sniper. Being in the front of the Allied advance, being in those wrecking vehicles was not an enviable place to be. And now we can see an initial advance. Interestingly, it's a mixed Allied group. American infantry with some British reconnaissance units. This was not unusual. We've got a jeep coming in. We've got a, a, an M3 Stewart. Yeah. 
very good. This would have been attached to the seventh armoured. It was desert rats. Many of the guys in the seventh armoured were beginning to think that perhaps they'd done their bit. They'd fought through the western desert, they'd fought up the boot of Italy, and now they were being sent into Northern Europe. But nevertheless, the steward is there covering the jeep. We've got American soldiers that had a pretty tough time of it. The last thing they want to do is run into a German ambush, and that's precisely what's going to happen. Now they're moving forward very cautiously. Some of these young guys here wouldn't even have left their home state before they joined the army, let alone travel halfway around the world to fight in a global war. This is an entirely new state of affairs for them. The nerves are really running high now. It's quiet. I'm sure some of them remember the sort of cowboy films they used to watch before they joined the army. It's quiet, it's too quiet. And that's precisely what we've got here. Not quite anymore. Germans have opened fire, they've caught the American infantry. Right, you've got meat coming around. I hesitate to say the Germans may have coming a bit too soon. Here comes the Stuart. There goes the Jeep. The Jeep has speed on its side, but that's about it. It's mounting a 50 caliber machine gun. But discretion is definitely the better part of valor. Uh, the American infantry coming up now, they're taking position under cover. It's likely now to be a firefight between the Americans and the Germans. The Germans are in a dug in a prepared position. They'd have scoped this position out long before they needed to use it. The Americans... This is unknown territory. There's some more armour coming in. Still, tip the reconnaissance armour. There we are, the Americans returning fire. We've got a Daimler armoured car coming in now. Like the entry steward, the Daimler did. Not his best service in the Western Desert. Now a little bit outmoded, but a very effective reconnaissance vehicle. Mounting a two pounder gun, that's a 40 millimeter, so a bigger gun actually than the Stuart. And relatively heavily armoured as well for, a, for an armoured car. So the Allies are bringing up some firepower, but it's still basically an infantry firefight at the moment. It's interesting, if you've been listening carefully, you'll notice that the Germans tend to be using single shot Mauser rifles. Most of the Americans are carrying a variety of light automatic weapons, Thompson submachine guns, I think there's a BAR riding automatic rifle there as well. Ah, right! The big guns open fire! Now that was a bit of a shock. It's not a modern weapon, but it does, it does create a deal of jeopardy for these lightly armoured or relatively lightly armoured reconnaissance vehicles. Now the Americans are going to need to flank this position if they possibly can, or to dominate it with superior firepower, whichever is available. And the Germans are bringing in some of their light armour now. Here comes the uh, 222. Again, very much a vehicle that did its best work in the Western Desert. Mounting a 20 mm quick firing cannon. Very, very bad piece of view. Uh, very, very good shot there. And here's the hammer. Now, the hammer is not particularly a fighting vehicle. It is mounting a couple of machine guns. It's 
Mounting an MG34 and an MG42 heavy machine guns, these are capable of pumping out somewhere in excess of a thousand rounds a minute. That is serious firepower. The Americans often call them Hitler's buzzsaws. They were so capable of laying down just a weight of lead. Here come the Panzer Grenadiers. Doing what they do, debussing from the armor personnel carrier, moving into combat. The Americans get some fire down on them. I'm going to suggest that that Jeep is in. That's not the best of positions it might be in. But again, listen to the fire. You'll hear the single shots coming from the Germans. This is because they are relatively short on all war material. They haven't got the ammunition to blaze away. They don't have access. Once upon a time, they would have been carting MP40 submachine guns. Not now. Ah, right, the uh, 2 has been hit. Very lightly armoured and open topped as well. It is quite vulnerable to things like air burst or grenades. <laughs> now, how are we going to break this stalemate? Well, here's one answer. Here comes a tank. So the M24 Chaffee, again technically a reconnaissance vehicle, is mounting a 75mm gun on there. It's fast, ready to be armoured, but it has heavy American reinforcements. And here comes a bit first. Here's M4 Sherman, M4A2. Ah, that's why the Jeep's very easy. He's got that 50 calibre. That 50 caliber originally intended as an anti tank weapon at the end of World War I. So, a very serious bit of kit. 222, injured but limping off. Yep, I can see the BAR in operation. The Americans are the same. Find them, fix them, flank them, and finish them. Look what's happening on the high ground there. They fix the Germans in position. They're flanking them. And they're going to be bringing fire down on the German ambush. Two by one can hit. It's interesting to think that many of the American GIs would have had German ancestry and probably spoke German as a second language, so they were quite capable of making their meaning felt. It is an edgy time. The Germans have hurt the Americans. The ambush was fierce and in reality would have been quite bloody. And now the Germans have surrendered. I don't know.
Luckily.